God. When I looked at the UN Convention on Refugees, it said that soldiers who refuse to participate in a war that has been condemned by the international community and face prosecution for that refusal, it amounts to persecution on the basis of political opinion. We thought Canada would uphold this, but instead they deemed the legality of the war irrelevant to our refugee claim. During the four and a half years that we've been here, more than 700,000 Iraqis have lost their lives and countless others have been mis displaced, all in the name of cheap oil from my country. I'm thankful to have my conscience intact by refusing to participate in this war and by having the opportunity to speak out against it. Although we hope to stay in Canada, if we can't, I will be proud to go to jail rather than be a killer. There's an inspirational quote by a writer, Anatoly France, that's really uh, inspired me in the last couple of weeks, and it says that, quote, War will only disappear when men shall take no part whatever in violence and shall be ready to suffer every persecution that their extension will bring them. This is the only way to abolish war. Thank you for being here. I want to draw also people's attention. Uh, Na uh, Nguyen is here with uh, baby Megan. And uh, is Liam here as well? We're soldiers living up here in Canada. Uh, we're decorated war veterans, many of us. Um, we all bought into the policies and the lies of 9 11. And it wasn't until a year of deployment that I saw the war for what it was really about. How our country's brave young men and women are dying in vain, dying for a lie. I joined the Army for health care benefits, job security, college money, not because I was a patriot. I've done my duty to the best of my ability for damn near 10 years. I've had the honor to participate in humanitarian missions, food and medical supplies, and clothing to war-torn Bosnia in the 90s. That's when I felt most proud to be a member of the U.S. Armed Forces, because I, cause what I was participating in was actually helping people. A lot of the soldiers that are deployed don't want to be there. I've seen it firsthand uh, as being deployed with my unit in, in 2003. Uh, a lot of them feel that it's not their place to question the commander-in-chief or that they have nothing to go home to because of a dying economy. The US, Army, the U.S. government makes it easy to join the Army. What young kid out of high school doesn't want to go to, go to join the Army and get money for college, $10,000 signing bonus to get out of the ghetto, to help mom and dad out and to do something with their lives? I left the Army because my heart wasn't in it anymore. Nobody around me believed in the cause. You can only go through life so long faking it. I always wanted to be the best I can no matter what I was doing, just as many of you people do. If you're doing your job, whatever it is, and you don't do it to the best of your ability, you make mistakes. Whether it's being a teacher, a journalist, a mechanic, in my line of work, if I don't do my best, people will die. We're saying that we took the easy way out. Looking back at it, it would have been much easier to just stay the hell in and go to Iraq for a year or so, shut my, shut my mouth, and don't question anything. But I'm sorry, that's not the way I was raised. Instead, I've uprooted my family. And I've moved here to Canada, where every day it's a struggle to remain. I enlisted voluntarily. What Canadians don't hear are words, are words like stop loss, involuntary extension, and stop movements. These are all terms that lock a soldier in place so you can't get out, even when their enlistments are over. If you want to support the troops, listen to them when they come home from deployments. We are the troops. We had a great day when that motion passed in Parliament, but it seems not to have meant much of anything to Stephen Harper and Diane Finley. The rest of the conservatives as well. Diane Finley is always spouting on about honoring Canada's laws and just leaving. Why won't she honor the thousands of petitions signed? Why won't she honor the will of Parliament? Why won't she honor the will of the people? Where is her honor? campaigns portraying him as a family man, a strong leader with family values. Jeremy Hinsman's a family man. I'm a family man. Josh Key is a family man. Does Mr. Harper know that if we're returned to the U.S., we'll be jailed, our families will be ripped apart, we'll be convicted felons, we won't be able to vote, we won't be able to get a good paying job, we won't even be able to get a bank loan. That's a great way to treat a family like the Hinsman's who now have a Canadian daughter, not to mention no health care. Time is running out for, for, for all of us. My family will get its decision on our agency in Pra on October 8th. And needless to say, we're back. To respect 
Parliament's decision, when Parliament said no to the deportation of these brave men, the people who have said no conscientiously objected to this war and what was taking place in Iraq. These are our heroes. These are the people that we need to keep in this country. These are the people that we should, as Canadians, admire for their dedication and say no to this war. We need to... There's also been a decision, not just by Parliament, but also by the courts, that also said that the Immigration Refugee Board also made a mistake when in fact it made its decision in not allowing these people to stay legitimate refugees. Conscientious objectors are legitimate refugees. They have a right to seek asylum. They have a right to stay in this country. And we are destroying the proud history. It started back in the days of Pierre Trudeau, when he said Canada should be a place for militarism, a haven for militarism. This is the proud history of Canada now being under siege by this Prime Minister, who does not respect our laws, does not respect the decision of the court, does not respect the fact that Parliament has made it also will being felt. This is wrong, and we have to send a message loud, loud and clear across this country that will not tolerate this. We have to stand beside these individuals, these brave men who have said no to this, to this disastrous illegal war that's taking place. And I ask all of you to stand and to support, continue your support, fight for what is right. This is the cause of social justice. We need to be on the right side, and we are on the right side. Thank you very much for your participation. Not in our name as a Canadian, we let these people alone. Brothers and sisters, it's your job, my job, my neighbor's job, my community job, is to stand together in solidarity for our brothers and sisters who are resisting this war in the U.S. and other war resistors who will come here. It's our job to open our house, our arms, our hearts, and say, welcome home, brother, welcome home, sister. Thank you.